Hey guys, welcome back to the Real Hacker Hour podcast. This is basically where I just do the normal work that I do in side projects. I just hit record for some of it. Right now I'm doing a bit of work on this FTP fuzzer. Particularly right now what I'm working on is the logic so I can have this fuzzer effectively cor- correctly emulate a an FTP client. That way when it does when the server does checks to see oh hey is this an actual is this valid FTP traffic it will see that it is and actually execute code paths that I want to evaluate. So here is a list of the various FTP commands. I'm just like going through it, implementing them one by one. Currently, I'm at the ENC command, so let's take a look at this. Specified in RFC 2228, which is right here. Have it from our previous command open. What an RFC is, it's effectively just a document that describes the standard for how a protocol like DNS, FTP, HTTP, or really any major protocol should operate. That way, multiple different software developers that never spoken with one another can write their software in accordance with this standard and will all and it all should work nicely together. So what it was this again, ENC. Let's take a look. What is this? I'm just control just searching through this document for the point at which it states what the syntax for this command is. Okay, cool. So we see that the syntax for the command is right here. Effectively, it's the ENC command followed by a space, followed by some base64 encoded data, followed by the FTP terminator. The terminator, it's pretty, you can think of it as like a new line since, let me show you something. This is a, this is a stream of FTP data from a previous effectively a previous iteration of my fuzzer running. We can see here that FTP data is clear text, we can clearly read it. And what a terminator is, it's a two byte sequence OX0D and followed by OX0A. You can think of it as like a new line, sort of. So, okay, let's go ahead and implement this command. Not it. This ENC command appears. I'm think I'm pretty certain it. De- yeah, it deals with um some of the additional like pr- privacy and security mechanisms of FTP. I get the feeling that I know when I implemented some of the other commands in here, like conf vs FTPD, just didn't have this command implemented. Now, one thing that you will see about a lot of protocols FTP. Actually, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's implement this first. So, command enc self data equals generate basic for data. This is just a helper function that just um, generates and returns some data that's in base64 encoded. And this function right here is just a function that will send a command to the server and automatically append the terminator OX0D, OX0A to the end of it. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. So we can see that it's here. Let's go ahead and run this just to make sure that it works. This is the this function right here is primarily the main function of which fuzzing will happen in or should happen. As I'm writing the fuzzer right now, I've just I'm just having it call the various new functionalities as I develop them to test it. So let's go ahead, put that there. 
restart the capture. Okay, cool. So what we're seeing here, you see that it is sending ENC, the ENC command followed by some base 64 encoded data. Now, one thing we are seeing is VSFTPD does not have this command implemented. Now, one thing you'll see with a lot of different servers, I was talking about this earlier, is there's, there'll be a ton of functionality specified by the RFC, but not every like implementation, both server side and client side will have that implemented. For this, I'm not like particularly worried about having it in the fuzzer itself, even though it's not implemented in VSFTPD. The reason for that being is I want this to be able to what I plan on doing is I plan on taking this and just running against a bunch of different FTP servers and seeing what happens. As such, if a command isn't implemented in every one of those, I, I'll i still have it in there and just for the circumstance that it is. Now, let's move on to the next command. Also, one other thing, I'm pretty sure this ENC command, the base64 data, it's... Let's see, what is it actually supposed to mean? Can we get a quick... Okay, it appears that like all of these commands in this RFC deal with some sort of additional encryption or some sort of additional security mechanism. Pretty sure these commands, the data associated with them, are supposed to mean something specific. However, judging from the fact that these commands appear to be a bit more like on the fringe side and not super common, judging from VSFTPD, not having them implemented. For right now, I'm fine with just having the command just be some random base 64 encoded data. So let's move on to the next function, eport. Okay, this is gonna be a fun command. Now, I think I've described this earlier, but I'm just gonna like repeat it. How FTP will transfer data is, actually, let me show you an example. Self dot action create file. So, look in this FTP stream, specify the user and the password and login. This command right here, what it will do is it will basically tell the FTP server, hey, I'm going to upload this file to it. Now, one thing about FTP is there's the main port, the main communication you're seeing right here. This is effectively just the commands that are being sent. Whenever it's sending over like relative data, such as like uploading a file, downloading a file, getting a directory listing, it will do that over a secondary stream. Right, right here, the port command specifies that. This here specifies the IP address. This here specifies the port. This right here is effectively t the port command tells the server to connect back to the client. And the pass V command effectively does the opposite. Tells the server, hey, listen on a port and I'll connect to you. And what we can see here, if we go over to the next TCP stream, you see FTP data predict these things which if we this is the actual contents of the file being uploaded we can tell that by if we go to the function actually responsible for this action create file generate file contents it is predict these things five times which you're seeing right there cool hang on one second okay getting back to this cool so what this now, 
with this epoch command, what I will do is it's an addition, it's a kind of a variation of the pork command. And for more on that, let's take a look at this RFC. As you can see, there are various RFCs to detail FTP, which you might see, you might see like one that is like a base for the protocol, and then you see additional that's like here's an extension for FTP or something like that. Cool. Oh, I just fumbled a little bit. Cool, let's go here. RC2428. And this is the RC equal, the eport command. Let's for specification. Must consist of the network protocol space the port. Space followed by Hold in space a delimiter in cater slash d it must be specified. The delimiter character must be one of so space some delimiter must be an address defined by as of okay this document according to the following table. Okay, what it's looking like, so one sentence explanation what the eport command stands for, it's like an extended port command. What that means in practice, what it's looking like from here is it seems that e the port command, from what I understand, it can realistically only handle IPv4 addresses. Eport command, the purpose of that seems to be that it can handle IPv6 addresses and IPv4 that we're seeing there. So, we're seeing here are two examples. Here is the um an IPv4 example. Here is an IPv6 example. So, okay, cool. How will we implement this? Cool. Looking back at this uh, FTP fuzzer that I have. So effectively, when it's done how I have it designed is there will be like a while true loop that will run there'll be some special type of exit and restore condition in case if certain parameters are met but that's beside the point sorry I had to clear my throat for a second each iteration of the loop it will pick in action to take and then run that um, I really have two defined types of actions. One of them are commands, which you're seeing down here. These commands are meant to just be like single FTP commands that are run. Stuff like, oh, hey, let's send them the username. Let's send them this command. Let's send them in the ENC command. And then I have the second type of actions I have. Should probably come up with a better naming scheme. This might is actions. What those are meant to do is various types of operations such as uploading a file, downloading a file. Should probably have one for authentication, changing the directory, making a new directory. They require a lot. They would might require several different commands to be executed in a particular order and way to ensure that the operation does happen. Like taking another look at this TCP stream, we see that in order for this to happen, we need to send the port command and then the store command, otherwise the transfer just will not function properly. Now, the this eport command, when it's implemented, will have to be implemented in the actions. Now, what I did for this is there are several different types of actions, such as downloading a file, uploading a file, getting a directory listing, in which you will have to set up the secondary data transmission stream, which is where an eport command comes in handy. Now, since I want this fuzzer to be able to have entropy, and the different ways it does stuff that includes like let's say it's uploading the file the first time it will decide to use the port command second time it uses the pass v command third time it uses the eport command 
so on and so forth. In every action that requires setting up the secondary data transmission, I have the setup data transfer and the actual execute data transfer to effectively abstract that away from the actual action itself. When we take a look at the setup data transfer, we see this. Yeah, we see effectively there's a generates a random number depending on what the number is. It will either do a port or a pass V. So how I implement this is with setting up the FTP secondary transmission stream, they're effectively, you can kind of group all the commands into two separate things. First one is having the client listen and socket and the server connect to the client. The other method is having the server listen on the port and the client connect to the server. I'm going to group that together. Since this is all um, this being the poor commands, so server connects to the client, these being the pass v commands, which client connects to the server. So I'm going to add it in an additional random number generation and check. And this will. So this here check, if this block runs, it means we want to execute a command that has the server reach out to the client. This right here means that we want to do it using the port command. This right here means that we want it to be done using the ePort command. Cool. Now, how are we going to go about doing this? If we look at the TCP string for a port command, we see that the syntax, like the delimiters are commas, or the delimiters here are dots, or actually it's the actual IP address itself. So we will have to change how we do that. Actually, this will be a bit simpler. We can just phrase it like, I'll probably have to add in an additional logic for IPv6. Right now, I'm just going to be strictly worried about IPv4. So, I believe in the fuzzer class, I have a parameter for IP. Yeah, IP. Cool. Actually, wait. Def generate IP. IP equals client IP. Actually, I have that defined as a constant. Yeah. Client IP. So let's go to def setup. This is where I have it. So IP string is equal to that. Client IP. Cool. Port. Actually, let's take a look how we generate. This right here, your function also generates the port, so I'm just going to take a look at what that is doing and effectively just mimic it. Port equals cool. So with this, we have the IP address, we have the port, and this number right here, looking at this, it appears that it's 1 for IPv4 and 2 for IPv6. So I'm just going to go ahead and form it. E port command equals B P R T. Of the IP string, 
and the port. Self.sendCMD. E port command. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to modify, just quickly modify these if then conditions. That way it forces the setup data transfer to use ePort. Reason for that being is as I want to verify that this ePort functionality is working. So let's go ahead, def fuzz. Let's run this in a loop for i in range 10. Let's run this. Something is wrong with data transfer visualization. Let's see. Okay, so there is an error. Something is wrong. Okay, cool. Def set up data transfer. Try. We could see right here error messages printed. Okay, so I see what the error is. This is an IP string. I have the format string specifying that it's a byte string, but it should be a string. Okay, it looks like I need to encode it. Right. Okay, cool. I'm just going to borrow this function. Def setup data transfer. Right. Yes. Eight. Cool, let's try this now. And I forgot to actually let's move this up here. Right. ETF eight. What the issue was there was it appears that it's expecting a byte type or value but I was passing it a string type value fun python theory stuff and on top of that I forgot to write my return statement data socket port data transfer this is the socket that we're using that you're using to actually communicate port data transfer that spec that just specifies for when you're that we're using a port type command to do the data transfer that way when we're executing we know hey are should we be like is this a socket that we're listening on or a socket that we're connecting out to let's try running this cannot transfer data what happened let's try running this again let's see what does the ftp stream look like Eport, eport command successful. Okay, I see what the issue is. The issue here is I didn't bind it. So let's take this and move it here. Oh, okay. For now, just to ver get this working, I'm going to copy this here. That should fix the problem. IP port. Okay, 
and let's get this back in. Continue without saving. Let's take a look at this TCP stream. So you see ePort command. I send it, ePort command successful. Okay, transfer complete, transfer complete, transfer complete. Okay, cool. So we see it is actually able to transfer the command. One issue that I am seeing is it appears that I don't have the parsing the command parsing on my side of the fuzzer effectively parsing effectively because we're seeing and here it starts like eport command eport command successful we send it store okay transfer complete and then as we go down here it looks like it's kind of like the exact sequence of like commands being sent back and forth aren't the same so that might be an issue I have to look into, but it's been 25 or so minutes, so I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.